The episode starts with our MC Isagi Yoichi dribbling towards the goal, thinking if they win this, they go to nationals. They're down 0-1, and as he's preparing to score, a teammate calls for the ball because he's open. He's hesitant to pass, but their coach tells him to remember, it's all for one and one for all. Isagi says that's right. Soccer is played with 11 guys on a team, so he passes it. But the guy hits the post. As the other team counters, they pass it to Kira Orosuke, who scores, causing Isagi's team to lose. Kira is doing an interview. The lady tells him that people call him the jewel of Japanese soccer. He was even called up to play for Japan's under-18 team. Could he tell him about it? He says, well, right now, he's focusing on winning at Nationals with his team. The only thing he can really say is the only reason he is who he is now is because of the guys on his team. Isagi's coach is telling everyone that they fought well. The third years are retiring. They should be proud of the days they spent fighting together as a team. Someday, they'll look back on this loss. He begins to break down while saying and feel like it wasn't a waste. As far as he's concerned, this Ichinan team is the best soccer team in Japan. But Isagi thinks to himself, no. They're a team that didn't make it to nationals because they lost in the prefectural qualifier. And now, he's an unknown second year forward on that team. That's the reality. And apologizes to Noah, who is Europe's best player. He doubts he'll ever be able to become a superstar like him. He wanted to become like him, but it looks like his dream will never be more than a dream. His idiotic dream of becoming a star striker for the national team and winning the World Cup. If, in that moment, he didn't pass, but take the shot instead, would his fate have been any different? And finally breaks down, saying that he wanted to win. As he's about to eat, his mom tells him that he received a letter from the Japan Football Union. Next, he's standing in front of the building when Kida shows up, asking if he got invited too, and tells him good game the other day, and totally remembers him. He has a broad perspective on the game, a high soccer IQ, if they were on the same team, he'd bet he hit some amazing passes to him. They head inside and see a room packed with other people. Kido points out a couple people. Seno's star player, Okawa, the tallest high school athlete, Ishikari, even Nishioka, the messi of Amori is here. Isagi notices that everyone here seems to be a forward. The lights shut off and we see a guy walking on the stage. He tells them congratulations, diamonds in the rough. They are the 318 and under strikers who have been chosen according to his arbitrary and biased decision making. He is Igo Jinpachi, the man hired to make sure Japan wins the World Cup. Simply put, there's one thing Japanese soccer needs to become the best in the world. The birth of a revolutionary striker. He'll be performing an experiment here to turn one of them into the world's best striker. And that's what this facility is for, Blue Lock. Starting today, they will live here together and undergo the special top training he's devised. They won't be allowed to go home, and they'll say goodbye to whatever soccer life they've been living up till now. But he can promise them this. If they manage to survive and beat out the 299 other guys here to become the last man standing, they will be the world's greatest striker. Kida raises his hand and tells him that he can't agree to the conditions he laid out. Each of them has a team that's important to them. Some of them have nationals coming up. He can't abandon his team to participate in some nonsensical program. Ego tells him that they're all seriously ill then, and anyone who wants to leave can go. Is becoming the number one high school team in this backwards country more important to them than becoming the world's best striker? He tells them that the power of Japanese soccer organizations is first rate. You can call it the result of Japanese thoughtfulness. But in all other respects, it is undeniably second rate, and asks them, what is soccer? Is it about 11 guys working together, valuing your ties to others, self-sacrifice, playing for your teammates? This is why this country's soccer has remained weak. Soccer is about scoring more goals than your opponent. Whoever scores the most goals is the greatest. Kida tells him that's a terrible thing to say, take it back. There are many athletes on the Japanese team that he respects. They grew up watching them fight together as an 11. He's wrong. Igo says the Japanese team, but they've never won the World Cup, have they? He's talking about becoming the best in the world. He then begins to quote other famous soccer players, 
Noah said instead of assisting his teammates to win 1-0, he feels better to pull off a hat trick and lose 3-4. And some other quotes from soccer players saying how good they are. That's what Japanese soccer lacks. You can't become the world's best striker unless you're the world's biggest egoist. He wants to create that kind of person here. Someone who will stand on 299 corpses. A solitary hero. Just imagine it. They're in the World Cup Final. 80,000 people in the stands. They're standing on the field. The score is 0-0. It's the second half of extra time. It's the last play. With a pass from their teammate, they're through the defense. It's them against the goalkeeper. Six meters to their right is their teammate. If they pass, they're guaranteed to score a goal. In a moment when the entire nation's hopes and the championship are riding on them, only an insane egoist can take that shot without hesitation. He opens the doors and tells them nothing should bring more joy to them than their own goals. Live only for that moment. Isn't that what it means to be a striker? Isagi runs forward, then everyone follows. As they're being transported to Blue Lock, Ego is saying that nowhere in the world is the soccer more intense than it is in Blue Lock. Isagi is holding a uniform that says 299Z, and comes to the conclusion that he needs to go into room Z. As he's looking forward, Kita comes up to him and tells him that he's glad he's sharing a room with someone he knows. As Isagi is changing, Kita is approached by a fan of his. The guy introduces himself as Igarashi Gurimu. His family runs a temple, but he doesn't want to take over the family business. So when he heard all that earlier, he couldn't stop shaking. He felt like this is his chance to change his life. Ego pops onto the screen, asking if they finished changing, and tells him the guys that they are sharing their rooms with are both their roommates and rivals who will help them improve. Their abilities have been quantified and ranked by him according to his arbitrary and biased decision making. That's what the number on their uniforms represent. They can tell at a glance what their rank out of 300 is. Their rank can change based on the results of their training and matches, and the top 5 players will unconditionally get to play in the tournament being held 6 months from now. They'll be registered as forwards for the Under-20 World Cup. Additionally, anyone who loses at Blue Lock will never get to play for Japan. What they need to gain here is Ego. He'll be testing them now to measure that, so it's time to play tag. They have 136 seconds. Whoever is struck by the ball is it. Whoever is it, the moment the time runs out, will be locked off. Also, no using their hands. The screen shows that Iganashi is it first. He goes to the ball and tells him no hard feelings. He's going to do this. If he loses, he'll be a temple monk for the rest of his life. He shoots it towards Isagi, but it hits the wall. Kira says this is ridiculous. He's here so he can prove him wrong. As Iganashi is running towards the ball, he notices a guy sleeping on the floor and goes to kick it at him. But the guy gets up and kicks him in the face. Igarashi tells him that that's a foul, in a game that'd be a red card. While the guy is rubbing his eye, he says that only handballs are against the rules, right? Another guy grabs his shoulder and tells him that he's not a fan of dirty play. And as he's talking, Igarashi hits him in the face with the ball. Kunigami goes to hit him back, but Igarashi uses Isagi as a human shield, making him it. As Isagi is chasing people, he thinks if he doesn't hit someone in the next minute, his soccer career is over. He doesn't want things to end here, and decides to go after someone ranked lower than him. As he's chasing Isagi, the black and yellow haired guy is holding Kunigami telling him here's your chance. But Kunigami throws him off into Igarashi, causing him to get hurt. As he's on the ground, Igarashi is calling for a timeout, but Kita tells him to hit him before it's too late. Weighing his option, he decides to do it. That's how things work here. If there are winners, then there must be losers. Making his dream come true means ending someone else's. Igarashi opens his eyes to see that Isagi stopped. Isagi says that's not right. If he doesn't change, he'll still be the same person. He came here to change his life. He came here to become the best in the world. Unless he beats someone stronger than him, nothing will change. As he's turning, Bachida tells him he likes him, and takes the ball from Isagi. He agrees. If you're going to beat someone, you should be the strongest one here. He begins to chase after Kita. As there are 5 seconds left, Bachida kicks the ball up. Ego tells us that someone once said, In the world of soccer, 
You can train first-rate goalkeepers, defenders, and midfielders, but strikers are different. You can see the relief on Kido's face that he's safe, but notices that it was a pass to Igarashi. Igo continues, a first-rate striker will find where the soccer is most intense and suddenly appear there. As Isagi hits Kido and the timer hits zero, then the episode ends. Some personal thoughts. This seems like it's going to be really good. I like the way they introduced the characters like the animation they did with it. I'm also looking forward to seeing what kind of planned ego has for everyone, because he definitely looks like a mad scientist, but for soccer. I also really like the shading they do on him, and just in general. It shows the intensity of the emotions the characters are feeling. We'll have to see, but I hope when they start playing games, and there's more to animate, the animation doesn't drop drastically. However, it's the same studio that did Reincarnated as a Slime, so I don't imagine the quality will drop. I think this is going to be a sleeper anime, since it's about sports, but I'm looking forward to it and next week, but that's about it, so yeah.